Uh, for more on this, let's bring in Patrice Lee Anwuka, Senior Policy Analyst at the Independent Women's Forum, and James Carafano, Security and Foreign Policy Expert. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Patrice, I want to quote this North Korean diplomat. One of the top diplomats said, we will not be interested in talks anymore if they, meaning us, uh, only try to push us unilaterally into a corner and force us to give up our nukes. And then they say that Trump will remain a failed leader. This is not rhetoric of a positive outcome for this summit. (laughs) I think they're pushing back on a lot of positive news that the administration has gotten in trying to actually secure this meeting. Um, You know, those who are cautiously cautiously optimistic or those who are extremely pessimistic recognize, though, that North Korea is very likely going to have they've reneged on their their deals in the past and they are probably just throwing up some roadblocks here. Um, I think what was optimistic, though, in this case was the release of hostages recently. But they've done that in the past in 2009 with Bill Clinton in 2010 with Jimmy Carter. So, you know, mm-hmm. I think what's going to matter here is the, the the pressure that China kind of exerts here in the China-U.S. Um, negotiations this week on trade. Can we loop, have like some, can we use China's pressure in a way to wrangle in North Korea? That's a really good question, Patrice James. And I'll take that question to you because where does China fit into all of this? We're still in very tense negotiations with the Chinese over trade. And now you've got the North Koreas, uh, Koreans pushing back, excuse me. Yeah. You know, I think that's some really good analysis. You know, I, I, the problem with the, the, tra- the China-North Korea linkage is we can't link them. You know, we can't be tough on China on trade and then you try to use them to help leverage North Korea. So I think those, those really have to run on separate tracks. But one is we've seen South North Korea do this before. It's nothing new. Two is the administration has already said they're willing to do a deal and that we don't get everything and they get nothing. So that's all rhetoric. And the third is, is our strategy limits the capacity of the North Koreans to threaten us, regardless of whether they come to the table or not. So we really have all the cards. Right. That's interesting. I, I, Patrice, I had a Arizona Representative Martha McSally on Closing Bell yesterday here on Fox Business, and she's actually going to South Korea over the three-day weekend, the holiday weekend. Listen to what she says about the president's uh, kind of role in all of this and what he needs to do and what he has done in the past about the North Koreans. This president has put us in a historic opportunity, Uh, but we are going in, as the president has said, very clear eyed that we've seen the North Koreans in the the past play games with this, talk the talk, but then not change their behavior. Mm -hmm. Uh, So all of the hard work is really in front of them. And the North Koreans have to decide whether they want to continue to suffer under the maximum pressure campaign, which will only get stronger with President Trump's leadership. Economic (laughs) sanctions, Patrice. That's the that's the true story here. Yeah, I think it is. Um, I think the North Korea and some of their rhetoric last night suggests that they're trying to to, to downplay the impact of um, of this maximum impact um, uh, agenda. But uh, you know, I think the proof is in the pudding in, in how their country is struggling. And you know, realistically, it, it, this is a country that's still in the what in, in a past generation. They do need to come forward. Um, and unfortunately, though, the leader of the nation is less is more concerned about his standing and and his nuclear ability and less about the, you know, the economic security of his people. Well, or about his own survival, James. You know, this uh, you have to remember that this top diplomat from North Korea also called out uh, John Bolton and, and comments on these demands from John Bolton to, to denuclearize in North Korea. You know, they're worried that they're going to turn into Libya. We all know what happened to Muammar Gaddafi. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think the Libya comparison really holds up. I mean, it's a completely different story. And Gaddafi lost his country because he lost control of his country, not because he gave up nuclear weapons. And remember, he didn't even have nuclear weapons. So the whole... <laughs> Comparison is just fatuous. Oh, well, Patrice James, again, like, again, watch your Twitter today, as Grip just said. We'll see what the president (laughs) has to say about all of this. Thanks, guys. Fascinating stuff.